Hi everybody, Sifu Joel Ledlow here. We are going to be covering um, one of the blogs that I wrote. Someone had, had uh, written into me and said, hey, I read your blog about Stray Blast and I would really love for you to discuss that further. So that's what we're gonna be doing today um, and going along with that. So I'm joined as often I am by that, Ian. So joined as often I am by Hi everybody. And uh, we're gonna go, sorry, I had a little bit of uh, feedback from my phone there. That way I can see the, the chats on there, multitasking uh, screens all over the place as we often do. Uh, so let's get into it and everybody sees us. Here we are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read, uh, read the blog and then we'll open up a few uh, questions. So if you haven't read it, or if you jump into this halfway through, um, you can always go to my website and do that. And I'll, I'll say that again at the end for those of you who missed it. So the title of it is All, Lo All Roads Lead to Straight Blast. And I'm just going to read it off of, off of my own blog right here. So All Roads Lead to Straight Blast. Everything we do in Jeet Kune Do leads us to Straight Blast. Everything. For most fights against most opponents, Straight Blast is all you need. Sifu Jerry Petit told me that if a person didn't know anything and only had two weeks to train for a challenge duel, old school Kung Fu challenge, then he'd just teach them straight blast. But not straight blast like most people do. It's not a Wing Chun straight blast because like everything else, it's JKD and not Wing Chun. Heck, it's not even like what most of the JKD world would call straight blast. And that's a huge problem. Most JKD instructors don't understand straight blast or even how important it is. I had a student in LA years ago who was amazing at energy drills. One day in training, I said to her, it all leads into straight blast. Everything we do is to get into straight blast. She stood there rocked for a minute. She'd gotten it the other way around in her head. Once she made the transition though, her JKD got even better. Straight blast is stance, footwork, hitting, energy drills, trapping all come together. Straight blast, properly applied is invasive. It takes distance and time away from your opponent and puts the violence of battle nearer and nearer to them, making it more and more immediate. It forces them to defend from the goal line. When I see the one hit wonders of the JKD world posing after a single hit or punch, I shake my head. That punch was to get you into straight blasts. The footwork and stance must be able to hold up to the intensity of close quarters with an aggressive and powerful opponent. It's not a movie, it's a fight. Far too many who say they are JKD people are really just fans who like to pose and pretend. Some genuinely try, but lack either the teaching, mindset, or experience to have a fighter's outlook. If your life isn't on the line and there is no real danger, then it isn't a fight. When I say fight, I'm referring to, street, to a street scenario. It isn't sport where there are rules, but it also isn't war where there are weapons. Straight Blast is at the core of JKD and one of the goals of JKD as a, mar as a martial art, and I think this is true for any martial art, is to overcome a powerful foe. Jeet Kune Do is applied against skilled opponents, powerful foes, ones that have the very real capacity to defeat you, an opponent that will demand everything you have. You know why Muhammad Ali was considered the greatest in boxing? Because he fought against powerful opponents. Most of the energy drills and trapping in the JKD world look like garbage because the people teaching them fundamentally don't understand that it's a fight, that you won't have time to do that flowery stuff. You have to hit. Your opponent won't be standing there complacently in a real altercation. You have to hit. And all hits lead to our most efficient form of hitting, straight blast. Straight blast is the full embodiment of the principles Bruce Lee gave to my teacher, Jerry Poteet. Always think hit, simplicity, efficiency, longest weapon to the nearest target. When it's done well, it cuts through all attempts to block. It is the raging river of hits that overwhelms an opponent the instant the op an opening appears. A little bonus for you. Straight Blast is not a flurry of three, four, eight, ten hits done super quickly. It is one hit delivered from stability with complete awareness of the opponent so that the next hit can be delivered as efficiently as possible. It is not the machine gun on fully automatic spraying out randomly. It is the precise firing of single hits 
to a viable target over and over and over until the opponent is destroyed. So if that kick isn't being trained to get you into straight blast, if that pox out isn't being worked as a transition into straight blast, if the road you're on doesn't lead to straight blast, if the way you fight doesn't work towards straight blast, then you are not on the way of the intercepting fist. In Jeet Kune Do, all roads lead to straight blast. Now I will say, this is, as I say in the blog, Jeet Kune Do as it was passed down to my teacher, Jerry Poteet. And I think that's important because uh, not all JKD is going to look like that because different people train with, with, with Bruce Lee and they got different things. And as I say in, in the blog, um, there are different, different aspects in that, the different experiences. Um, uh, Jerry Petit was, was in the army. He had a military background and, um, he also had a real world background. He worked security. He, he had some real confrontation. He had some fights go on. Uh, and you know, he was, he was in, in classes with people who were skilled. He, like a lot of other people, when like all the other people at the Chinese, at the Chinatown school with Bruce Lee, when he was teaching there, they were all fighters. So they were, they had martial arts experience and, and real world experience. If you look at those guys, a lot of them are from, uh, they were from Ed Parker's, uh, Kempo school. They were all black belts. Um, a lot of the guys that were, I think all the guys that trained in the backyard, uh, the group of five. So Jerry Petit, uh, Bob Bremer, Pete Jacobs, uh, uh, Daniel Lee and, um, uh, Steve Golden. Um, they were all black belts and, you know, they had a, a different mindset about coming to, to train and, and, and being on point. And Jerry said, I think that's one of the reasons why Bruce picked us because we all showed up and we, we were punctual and we had the mindset and he could work with us and he could work on building up JKD. Um, and I, I referenced the, the movie aspect of it in there as well. We see it. So one, it's not Wing Chun. It's not, you know, you see Donnie Yen doing it in a movie. First off, that, that's a Wing Chun variation. Secondly, it's the movie version of a Wing Chun variation. Uh, it, I love the movies and I think they're super spectacular. And I think it's really cool. If you haven't seen the Ipmon movies, uh, go watch them. The, you know, there's some very surreal, very crazy fight scenes there but they're like jason Bourne movies they're like john wick movies they're like a, they're like enter the dragon all the bruce lee's movies they're entertaining and they're super fantastic and i love them for that but that's not real fighting that's not how it is uh, ian you have something yeah i was just gonna say for anybody out there that's watching what we're actually talking about is the difference between wing chun chain punching as i got it whenever i used to train in wing chun versus a chain punch in Jeet Kune Do, which we would refer to as straight blast, but we really kind of want to sever the difference between that. And really that's what this stream is about to talk about how it doesn't, what, what we're actually training is a much different representation of what you've most likely seen through the likes of Wing Chun or through the likes of the modified Wing Chun, both from all of the lineages that you have in these other arts. And that's kind of what we're trying to get to the bottom of. But whenever we say, I guess, uh, straight blast, the four, the core fundamental principle of that stems off of that chain punch variation to where we further modified it into something that is as Sifu Joel described. Yeah, and, and absolutely, JKD absolutely has roots in Wing Chun. But as I often say, you know, Bruce Lee changed the name because he changed the philosophy and the movements. And it, it was him taking a different line to, to figure out how to beat better martial artists. There was, he knew people who were really good. Um, it, you know, that's never been in doubt. Uh, I mean, people think that maybe he was, you know, inhuman in Superman. Um, that's not true. Uh, I actually, when I first met Jerry Petit way back in 2000, I, I remember asking him, I said, I, look, I grew up like Bruce Lee died five days after I was born. Um, you know, I, I was born in, in, in July 15th, uh, 1973. So he died right after that. Um, but I grew up with the movies. I grew up with the the folklore and the legends. And you get 
you know, the the one half says that he was superhuman and could never be beat. And the other half says that it was all fake and stuff. And and Jerry Petit was like, he wasn't fake, but he was also human. Um, he was supremely gifted. Um, so Jerry Petit held it. He was an unbelievably skilled martial artist. But what he told me, I said, you know, I, I grew up all this. What was the truth? What, how legendary was he? He said, well, before he died, Bruce had gone back to Hong Kong and Ip Man was an old man at this time. And he had moved with Ip Man. Now I've heard it two ways. I remember him telling me that it was Chi Sao. Somebody else told me that, no, they were actually moving uh, and, and sparring and fighting. I think it was in Chi Sao. So that's the way I remember it. So that's what I'm gonna do. But that was like 22 years ago. So maybe I got it wrong. Um, but the point of the story was Bruce went back and, and said, uh, he said, I still can't touch the old man talking about if he was moving with him and could not put a hand on him. If was still just so flipping good. So that was one of the driving forces for Bruce. And I guess that was actually, he came back and that was when training. So that would have been before he went to Hong Kong uh, for the movies. So that would have been roughly like 70, 69, 70. Um, and that was when, when Jerry Petit was, was training at the school as well. Towards the end, uh, he started in 68, I believe when the school opened. Uh, it was uh, one of the first people there. In, you went away. I know. Uh, Go on away. It's, oh, you're it's back. Connecting and disconnecting. That was his ninja so trick. If you see me freezing or I have a funny face or something, it's because the camera is is freezing. So apologies. Uh, he's just doing his ninja tricks. <laughs> uh, so there is a little bit of a difference. And and again, I go to these principles. And like I said, so Sifu Jerry Petit, like like a lot of the guys, came from a martial background and. He was telling me about this. He said, I, I was asking Bruce and he said, Sifu, I, how am I supposed to know I'm doing Jeet Kune Do as opposed to, to oh, something else? How do I know it's Jeet Kune Do? And, and Bruce said, well, it's simple, it's efficient. You're using the longest weapon to the nearest target and you're always thinking hit. And the way it was given to me and the way we, we looked at those principles was always think hit, simplicity, efficiency, and longest weapon to the nearest target. And over his, his time, uh, just... Jerry Petit had switched it and he gave it to me that way because that's the way he he could better translate that information to students like me. Can we um, can we talk mm -hmm. about that for a second? Because I think that like in regards to how much controversy there is in regards to what JKD is and what it's not and whatever, like I really just want to sit there on those principles for a hot second because this understanding those principles is where I believe is the most confusion about people understanding well, what is it, what is it not. Mm -hmm. It's not whatever you want it to be or making things up. It's saying take any piece of movement that you do, regardless of if it's in the context of fighting or not. For example, some of you have may seen the short that I posted on tricking and mm -hmm. take that idea and make it as in complete the task, then make it simple, then make it efficient, then think about the longest weapon to the nearest target in that aspect. And if you are taking any piece of movement through that filter, that is applying JKD to those specific movements. And I, I just personally really wanted to touch on that aspect because that is the difference between make up your own style and do whatever you want versus here is a filter or here are the guidelines that actually help you perpetuate whatever it is that you're trying to incorporate into the idea of JKD. I think there's, I think there's a, a you bring up a, a good point to, to sort of we'll go into. So I have worked Jeet Kune Do, so there's a couple of things. So, I come from a fighting background. So when I was learning it, I came in, I was already skilled. I already had real world experience. When I was training with Jerry Petit, I was continuing to apply not only as, as a student against other people, but also as an instructor and also as a security guy uh, working in Hollywood. And I was using it against real people who were of various shapes, forms, and sizes who were trying to do harm to me or someone else. I had to, I was in those situations and, you know, I, you get a lot of people who want to nitpick over, do this or do that. And it's like, yeah, but dude, your movement sucks. Like that shit will not stand up in a real fight. You're trying to hold to, I have to stand in this perfect pose. I have to be like this. And that's real Jeet Kune Do. It's like, no, real Jeet Kune Do is fighting. Now you can take the principles and you can apply them. In has been applying them to tricking, which is something outside of Jeet Kune Do. I've worked with uh, students who were discus and shot put throws, uh, phenomenal athletes. And then I was able to train them 
in Jeet Kune Do and get these principles into them and use things to some of the training that we do to then help them increase their their throws. And they did like astronomically, they dominated and were uh, won several national titles in the US. So, so, but here's the deal. I could help Ian out because Ian was training in it, but he'd often ask me about stuff. And now he does a lot of that for himself. He's able to, to then take his own personal knowledge and apply it. But we have to have the understanding first. You can't just, you know, Ian couldn't just read a freaking, you know, the Tao of Jeet Kune Do and be like, yeah, I'm going to apply that to my tricking and it'll work. I mean, maybe. What do you think, Ian? Yeah, if you read about the sea, you know, and you learn about waves and stuff and you go jump in the water, you know, like you're going to get your yeah. ass handed to you and most likely drown. You have to. Yeah, have I read that. a book on surfing and the ocean, but this is my first time with a surfboard and at the ocean. Yeah. I'll be I, fine. I read a book on surgery and now I am a surgeon and licensed. And now I'm going to teach that. It's like no, no it's not saying you can't, it's not saying you can't get insight from it. And and a lot of people I think also confused on that aspect of you know, and we are we are talking about this, but it's also important to understand why the the, the context and the the application of, of straight blast and why we want to do straight blast because it's a fighter's aspect it's a fighter's outlook and when bruce is talking and and in most of his things that he's his notes that people are put together and and publicized which is fantastic he's not talking about someone who just decided to start to go to the gym and start doing some punches and kicks for the very first time right it's not about that he's talking to other people with fight experience who have training, who have had to use it against a skilled opponent, someone who they might lose against. Um, you know, that's the difference. It, it's not, it's, I mean, in any sport you do that I can think of, you can't just be like, well, I just, I read a book on it. I'm going to come up there and I'm going to play, you know, I read a book on football. I'm going to go play in the Super Bowl tomorrow. And also uh, that translates to your training, you know, like if you're trying to get in the NFL, do you want to go play with high school kids or do you want to go play with people that are also working towards getting in the NFL? Because there's a similar. And, and the thing is, if you look at the NFL, if you look at any, any major sport, if you've had the fortune to be around those, that caliber of athlete, where whatever they're in, they're otherworldly. They are on a different level. Um, you know, I played football. I've been around NFL players, man. They are, they're totally, they're monsters, uh, just physical monsters walking this earth. And they put a lot of hard work in and on the field, they outperform everybody else. If you put someone from the NFL on, uh, you know, in a, back into college, they will destroy them. Best college team would get destroyed by, by last place NFL team. Yeah. Uh, same thing, you know, very, very few people have gone from high school to NBA. Kobe Bryant was one of those, and he wasn't the best when he first got in there. He was exceptionally good and he was groomed, but he was on a different plane of existence. You know, like you take Kobe, you take, uh, you know, you know uh, Michael Jordan, you don't get to be that level and, and do it. Uh, one of the, one of the students I have up here, Ryan said he was talking to a guy who he knew personally who played in the uh, mid-level of hockey up here in Canada. And he was uh, on the ice with a guy who used to play for the Jets and then they played with the Kings and he was retired. This guy was retired. And he said, we were skating and the guy was in front of me, had the stick and a puck and just left him. This guy was retired and just left a professional hockey player behind. He's like, I just could not keep up with him. I've been on the ice and skated. I'm a crappy skater, but then I've seen other people. I, I talked to, it was a, a, another dad. I was skating and I said, man, I was feeling really good about it. And I saw you skating and I thought, wow, like I feel just like this big because he was so much better than me. And he made it look so easy. He was so much faster and more powerful. And then he said, he went over, thought about it, came back and he's like, well, yeah, I did probably about 30,000 hours of skating in my life. And the other thing to keep in mind is that while you might not have access to during your training to people that have these exceptional skills, you still always want to have the mindset of training against that kind of opponent or against that kind of adversary, because that puts you in the mindset of I'm not quite good enough and pushing you to the next level. If you're trying to beat somebody up, you know, who is drunk at a bar or whatever, then 
you're not really doing training because that's not a fight. It couldn't be dangerous. Yeah, Absolutely. I got into a scuffle with an idiot. But that's a whole was different thing. Like this. That, it's, it's, I dealt with plenty of those people. It was never, it, that was never an issue. They were, they were out. And most of the guys out there, it's not going to. Um, but I do want to go in here. Uh, we, we got a comment. Uh, chain punching, the English term, is, is more than, or than the punch, the ching ching choy. Um, it is, is more than this. And it uses a clearing motion, and I'm assuming for the, the Wing Chun. Uh, so on that, yes, uh, it does have a natural. So generally, it will come this way, as you see. But you can also do it with an open hand, and you can also do it with a, a fox out coming in. Now, here's something else. Uh, Jerry Petit was telling me when I was one of the times I was at the house, one of the many times I was at the house, uh, and we were talking about stuff. And he, he said, yeah, he was over at Bruce's house once, and Bruce had a film. He said, I don't know where he got it. I don't know if he know, knew anybody in there, but it was guys in Hong Kong, they were fighting and they were doing straight, straight past. And that's all it was. It was ba, 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 And, and he said, see that, see that. And, and Jerry said, I just, see what? I didn't see anything. And the guys were doing Tan Sao, Lop Sao, Jut Sao, all the things. So all the, the, the forward motion is a hit, but the return motion, that's where a lot of your traps come into. And, but it's always a byproduct of hitting. So traps are always a byproduct of hitting and straight blast is your best. It, it, you can clear and you can do this. And that's where for me, it's not a series of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It's a drill that Ian has seen me teach many times. Okay. We do one, 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 because I'm alive. I'm making contact with, yeah. With with any hand tool, with every everyone, to, however you make contact with the opponent, you want to have that feedback, and you're going to be alive in the moment, and then you're going to be directing the next hit, and the next hit is meant to destroy, and then destroy and destroy, and where it goes fast is you're just faster at doing it. It's like anything else. You just you know you can throw a baseball faster than the other guy. Right. You could throw straight blast faster than the other guy, but being fully viable in the moment. And so he's also replying with hooking with the fists on the return clear. And, you know, we don't really want to get too far into like, well, this is this and this is this or whatever. But just as a means of talking about efficiency, you know, part of the thing that we try to be mindful of is that it, typically within Wing Chun, you're right. And we've also seen people throw fists backwards in this way um, when it comes into efficiency. Right. And let's just pretend like all of someone's chain punches are just as powerful. If you take a machine gun and you hold the trigger that's a fully automatic, it's going to be very hard to hit with every single bullet. If you take a semi-automatic that has the same amount of power or something, you're able to recalibrate and have a moment between each one to have a reactionary movement or to make a readjustment. And so all of those things that you're talking about, about clearing and whatnot still apply. But if you throw 50 punches, even if they're all super powerful, you are going to start to lose quite a bit of efficiency, accuracy, and everything else in between. And so- absolutely you have to have that readjustment. It has to be like Sifu Joel is saying with the aliveness because things aren't, you're not going to throw 50 punches in someone's face and expect to knock them out. You're going to be too tired. Or even 10. Or even 10, you know, do it yourself. It's just, throw it's just, 10 you're punches. Have a, a, it's a diminishing, because because it's a diminishing return because you you don't get the opportunity to, to reclaim your stability. Right. And you're not, you're not, you're not aiming again. You know, you're just, it's like Spraying in a movie off, with a machine right. gun. You know, spray and you know spray and pray um and, and there's a time for that you know just throwing punches out there but here's the other thing you can see variations of straight blast the essence of straight blast of what we're talking about of what what is being cultivated with this forward pressure this invasiveness this hitting and and, and locking on you see it in freaking ufc man um it's called ground and pound and i've seen it where there was a big time and i don't even remember who the fighters were but there was uh there, I thought it was great because uh, one guy was down. He was really good at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And the other guy was just sort of punching. And the commentators are all like, well, we got to go with the technique guy. got to go with uh, with the grappler on this one. I have a wrestling background. Like, I love grappling. The other guy just ditched it and just started beating the crap out of him. In with Ninja again. Uh, and boom. And just made all the commentators, like, have to shut up and and put their foot in their mouth because they they literally were like well he's never gonna he's never gonna beat him with those punches and then he said screw that and the guy just started punching you see it quite often very successful now a lot of in the ufc where you see straight blast being more 
applied and why so many people don't end with a stray blast is because it's a sporting world. And you see a guy's on his back and he's getting punched and punched and punched and punched with these straight blasts and it's devastating. It's absolutely devastating. So he turns over. You go back to these fights, you'll see somebody get on top and they start beating the crap out of him. The guy will turn over and then they slip in a choke and, and tap him out. And it's like, well, he choked him out. No, 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 no. He was beating the crap out of the guy, but then got an opening. But then the guy turned over because it's in a sporting world and you can't punch to the back of the head. If you do that on the street, they're just going to keep punching in the back of the head and kill you, man. Um, they're not going to stop hitting you if, if that's their go-to. But in a sport world, and that's kind of the difference between looking at street street application versus sporting application. And um, I'm not sure what it's not on or off. The timing will vary. The timing always varies with, with straight blast. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're, you're saying like, you're not like da, 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 or off. Yeah. It, it's hitting and it, it's like anything else. It's just a tighter structure. So I remember talking to C. Dre. the difference between uh, jab cross is you're going where the shoulders are rotating and the hips are rotating and you're, you're more in this horizontal plane and you've got an ellipse coming in, in this way. And then straight blast, the ellipse, goes this way and everything tightens up and the shoulders and the hips lock into place because your distance is closer. You know, it, it's a, it's a closer punching range, just like a hook is, is generally closer and can be a lot closer or like an elbow elbow range is closer than, you know, jab cross range. Well, straight blast is closer than jab cross range. Um, and, and, and if that's, you want to fire, use it. Yeah, What's I'm that? sorry, Sifu. I was just gonna say, like, and if you want to fire, you know, a series of punches in this way, that's one thing. But make them count. Don't just throw fifty. Make each one matter. Yeah, if you're if you're trying to do it and and you're using it as a attack by combination, uh, I can see that. If you know I'm gonna go ba ba ba, and it's gonna clear, I'm gonna get one in. I'm gonna draw that hand up. It's an attack by draw. I'm gonna draw defense. Uh, it's great against someone pairing. So you just punch and they parry and you just keep punching. And that's where the, the sensitivity and the awareness drills go into, which goes back into what I, I was writing about. All roads have got to lead. Uh, eh. Well, well we're talking is, about straight blast. So yeah. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about chain punches because I, 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 Ian has trained in Wing Chun. I have not. I've never actually trained in Wing Chun. I moved around with a couple of Wing Chun people. Um, no, but, but I've never up... actually trained in Wing Chun. I've seen them, uh, and I've, I mean, I've been close to, to people when they've been training, and, and some really top tier guys who who are solid. And this uh, is why we and talk I don't have anything this. against it. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and I don't have anything against it. It's it's, uh, but I I don't I'm not going to speak to Wing Chun. There are plenty of Wing Chun experts out there that you could talk to and would give you the the mindset. I'm talking about uh, Jeet Kune Do straight blast, and specifically as I learned it from Jerry Petit. Uh, and, and so it is, it is different uh, and it does move differently, um, at least in the cultivation. And again, right. that's kind of what we're doing. Cause when you get into it, you, you know, it might not be nice and tight. And a lot of times for me, it's not going to be nice and tight. It's going to be just sort of getting in there. And that's kind of why um, we're having this conversation is to kind of, you know, bring that to the light of saying, you know, when people think of chain punching or a lot of times they assimilate or associate chain punching with with straight blast and you're right there those are two different things but we're talking about the idea of having an oppressive forward nature where everything that we use regarding the principles of jkd are applied through a single movement and then they're repeated in order to have that oppression obtained you know if you have a hole in a ship and you are trying to stop the water flow you're holding it against but the water coming in as soon as you open it up shoots out sorry <laughs> same idea i've got to i want to i want to share in this Again, as we're talking about Jeet Kune Do, and I, I was given to read, as, as hopefully many other people were given to read, um, uh, the Book of Five Rings, The Art of War, and you start beginning to look at your yourself differently. You start considering yourself as an army. Um, you know, I have a fist here and a fist here. That, that's that's my infantry. My legs might be the artillery, as, as Bruce would talk about. <clears throat> and you, you have all this stuff. And then you start thinking about You've got a barrier. We often talk about barriers. You know, you've got barriers up here. This is a, a barrier. It's just like a castle wall. Now, if you're trying to breach the, the wall to get into the castle, just like a SWAT team might try to breach a door to get into a building, that's the same thing. But they don't ever like breach the wall, and it's not like you know, let's don't let's don't go in. We broke the wall. 
you know, that's what the catapult was for. The catapult has now broken the wall or the battering ram has broken down the, the gate. Well, let's just stand around. No, because the other people are going to be trying to shore that up immediately to defend themselves. So as soon as I get this down and or, or what, however you get that opening, you got to go, you got to get into it. And that's go. why it's, it's once it's there at all roads. So wh however, however you get to break into it, whether you're doing the battering ram for the front door, whether you're, you're taking a scaling ladder to go over the wall, whether you're, you're throwing a uh, lob and, you know, boulders at the wall to break it down, whatever you're trying to do, however you're getting to it. If you think of like sieging, you're someone you're putting on the siege, but once you get a breach, it's into the breach. You've got to go in and it's go, go, go. Just like a SWAT team. Once they breach that doorway, they're go, 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 go. And each one has to be alive and in the moment and looking for a target. You, you don't just, you know, you know, you don't think of a SWAT team, you know, the first guy comes in and shoots somebody. And the second guy up, comes in know? and just like, just like jumps Shoot on me. the floor. And the yeah. third guy just like, woo, he's going to go sit on the couch or something. You know, each one has to be fully viable and fully alive and in the moment. So the first guy comes in and takes the first person. The second guy comes in and takes the second person. The third guy comes in and has to find a third person. They have to find somebody. They have to keep coming in. So each one of those has to be getting into it. And it, and it has to be done rapidly because they're going to close the door on you. If they close the door, you got to start all over. And You've lost it, the moment. It, You've lost the moment. Now, maybe it is an opening you can get into, but here's the other thing. Um, we're talking about skilled opponents. So if I breach an opening in one place and they're able to, you know, shore that up, they know that's an opening. They're going to be looking to fight that against you in that opening. They're not going to leave it unguarded. So that means you have to go work to go find another opening, which you may or may not have the proper equipment to do for. If you only brought a battering ram and you hit the main gate, that's all you got. That's all you've got. You and, know, I don't have, just, sorry, I, I can't, I don't have a catapult that's going to work against this guy. And not just that, but, you know, when you're talking about fettering and stuff, do you want your opponent trying to close a door or do you want an opponent trying to breach you? You know, if somebody has a real punch yep. towards someone's face and they go, oh, crap, that's somebody saying, I don't want to get hit. And that's the mindset that you want to have is to give somebody mm -hmm. something to deal with that's a real threat as opposed to just that's a fake moving the into violence. A, and violence closer to them you want you know if, you, if you're playing again you're playing sports you know whether it's hockey uh or soccer you want you want the the, you want the puck offense. or the ball yeah. to be close to their goal and you know what if i'm taking shots on goal i'm taking shots on goal they're defending the whole time they're not taking shots on my goal and that's one of the key things of it, it sometimes you see it in a hockey game or a soccer match where they're just like, boom, 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 boom. It's just shot after shot. And the goalie is just having to defend and defend, defend, defend. And then, boop, one gets through. Then you apply the breach. One gets through, then it, it's it's all into it. Right. Yeah, I, it is often, uh, if you've got two skilled, uh, if you take two skilled JKD people, it is very much, or two skilled fighters in general, it is kind of like uh, aiming two high pressure water hoses each other. And the first one to to move that that off is the first one to get hit. Uh, it's a great example. Um, but it it works for JKD. I think it works for for anything. You you see it a lot in in sport fighting, even in you know getting in a boxing ring, um, and you'll see a, a fighter get in there and move. Uh, when I did kickboxing, we did a, this a lot of just put put somebody in the corner with your footwork and then just bombard them and. and just beat the crap out of them and just move into them. Boxers, kickboxers, karate people, taekwondo people, they all can do it. And you usually see really good fighters, the ones who are moving to the cream of the crop. They're the ones who do this. And that's what Bruce Lee was, was looking at, was the skilled fighters, the top tier people. What are they all doing? What do I do? What do I need to do in order to be one of them? And then what do I need to do in order to beat them? And he was comparing that to the people he knew. He trained with a lot of martial arts people, not just Wing Chun people. Um, so he was around other guys who could move and fight. Um, let's see if there's anything else in here that I want to share. I like the, the analogy. And, and it's just, again, those analogies are there for you to sort of get into it. But when you get into, when you get into moving, if you're thinking about just like finished it, just pop, 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 whatever your hits are, you just want to finish it. 
So now your footwork, if I move, that's to get me into to straight blast. Um, if, if I throw a jab and I connect with it, there's my opening. I want to throw that straight blast. I want to be able to finish them off with that straight blast. If I do a kick and it's successful, straight blast. So you might be actually straight blasting downward. Um, if you're on the ground, you know, and you hip high somebody over you, bop, 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 and straight blast. Uh, there's a cool drill that we do where you, you do flip someone on the side uh, and they're to the side of you and you straight blast and you turn away and you go into kicks and you can straight blast with the feet. Um, so that stuff that I do again with, with a back background in grappling, I'm comfortable on the ground. And then you add in the years of striking it, and it gets applied all, all the way across the board. So wherever you are, if you're standing up, you're against a wall, you're sitting down, you're on the ground on the top or the bottom, it's straight blast. And it is still doing all those, those, uh, those things there. I don't see a lot of people doing it the way that I do it. Um, I'm not saying that people don't train it that way, but you know, it's what's out there. Um, and, and, uh, you know, there are some really great people who are out there. I know personally, some people who are phenomenal martial artists who do not teach. They, they, you don't see them. You, you don't, you don't know them at all. Um, but they're really good. Uh, they can fight, uh, most of them have punched me in the face at some point in my life, multiple times. I've punched them back though, too. <clears throat> um, see if there's anything else. Yeah, I think that kind of is, is getting into it. Uh, really training everything towards that mindset is what I would like to leave everybody with of I'm here and whatever you do, you want to think about getting whatever you want to call it, straight blast, you want to call it chain punches, you want to call it ground and pound, you want to call it bunches of punches, you know, you want to just call it hitting a guy in the face a whole bunch of times until he falls down. Whatever you want to call it, it's just keeping that forward pressure on. Once you can get onto target, you want to keep going with it and, and finish it because that's your opening. You may not get another opening. They may get an opening on you. Um, and that's the difference, the different mindset of reality of looking at i'm fighting someone who is dangerous and could hurt me or kill me and i have to take them out and so if i get an opening i'm not going to pose at the end of it i'm going to put everything i have into hopefully a smaller opening and that's what straight blast does you tighten everything up when i go here it's a lot more rotations and and i can't fit into such a, a small target with alternating the hands there's a wider gap, but between. you can, you can fit this in. I always think about it's like a tube and you're following that tube into it. And if you get that opening, just drive everything you have into it, just finish it off. And you see this in sport, you see somebody boom, get hit and you see really good fighters. Boom. They know it's there. They just go for it. Uh, you even see it on a football team. You can see it on a hockey, uh, on the ice. Uh, suddenly they know, Oh, they're, they're down. You know, they're mentally down There's a uh, players got hurt whatever it is, or, you know, like, oh, this player, I know there's a weakness right there. We're going to attack it, attack it, attack it, attack it. And that's basketball. You see it in basketball. And all of a sudden, you know, timeout, 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 timeout. Well, that's to stop the momentum because they're just overrunning you. There's no timeout, timeout, timeout in the I'm street. Fighting. So if whoever gets to it first gets to it. So you better make sure that everything you're doing is getting you to get that opening. And then when you get that opening, that you're trying to finish them off. And that's where it's all roads lead to straight blast. Because for us, straight blast is the is is the finisher. Now, if I punch somebody in the face once and they fall down, great. But let's be realistic. I've punched a lot of people in the face. A lot of those guys I was talking about, guess what? They didn't go down. Um, you know, they hit hard. Uh, not everybody goes down. And a lot of people, boom, woo, and they're back into it. And you don't know who's, and some people, boom, and they're down, glass shot. But you don't know who it's going to be because probably, you know, hopefully it's not your best friend. Yeah, and not just that, but, you know, or you hit somebody and it makes them even more mad, and now you have to deal with that. Yeah, you, it, if you get a hit in, you'd better throw a whole bunch of more hits after that so they don't get to, to put more emotional content into it um, and getting into it. I think we covered this pretty well and we're just going to go ahead and uh, wrap things up. Uh, so for everybody, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you're watching it uh, in a replay, I hope you enjoyed it. You can always find my blog on 
why I read it to you, but uh, you can always find my blogs on evolutionjkd.com and just go to the blog section and check that out. But uh, for now, we're going to be signing off. Have a great time. Be sure to like and subscribe, everybody. We'd appreciate it.